Well, as you know, it's a daily routine for most North Texas students riding to school by bus. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you a little bit about student tickets here at Lloyd Noble Center. The student section behind me, students will pay about $35 per ticket here. And that's it for the CBS Evening News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shannon Miller. Good night. We're here just north of Crescent right now where firefighters have been battling this fire for several hours now. You've got it all souped up with sound and rims and... It's as simple as this. Women get in their cars and see a note on the back of their windshield. I'm here with Ross Skinner with what he calls the bug box, but I'm looking at his, his setup here and I don't see any bugs, Ross, but I see a lot of boxes, so tell me what's going on here. That's right, I'm out here outside of Crescent Fire Department where firefighters are still coming in from one of the longest days they've had so far this year, even on one of their most celebrated holidays. For miles, the air was a mix between smoke and red dirt. Spot after spot, acre after acre, the blaze in Crescent grew. It's bad. I was real surprised how big it is. Of course, it's so dry and the wind's high. High winds are exactly what helped spark the fire. At times, kicking up dirt so thick it was difficult to spot fire trucks. Officials got word of the fire early in the afternoon, and just three hours later, the fire had spread more than 500 acres. Firefighters from 20 departments came to the scene, all working to shut down what the wind kept bringing up. We're uh, coordinating with a lot of departments right now, just trying to keep everybody straight. Um, trying to get everything knocked down before dark gets here. Uh, Crescent firefighters had another yeah, deadline come sundown, there. their annual bean supper. This is the first time I know of we've had this major fire at the same time as our annual bean supper. It's the department's largest fundraiser of the year. But the supper went on, bowl after bowl, helping to raise the department's most valuable funds. It's money that we uh, will always have accessible to us. Uh, we don't have to go through any red tape or government to access that money, and uh, we can have it available immediately if we need it. And after such a long day of battling the blaze, the annual bean supper never tasted so good. Now, several of these firefighters remain on that fire scene at this time. They tell me they'll be spending the rest of the night and tomorrow morning checking on some of those lingering hot spots. Reporting in Crescent, I'm Shannon Miller, News 9. Well, as you know, it's a daily routine for most North Texas students riding to school by bus. Get on, sit down, and take off. But for some students, there may be just one more step ahead. It's the first day back to school for students at Stoltz Road Elementary. And this busload of kids learned one of their first lessons of the spring on wheels. How you doing? I did it. They're learning to buckle up now on some of their school buses. Dallas County Schools, a major school bus service for Dallas ISD, is the first in the state to install seat belts in its buses. I think it's a great idea, and I think a lot of parents will be supportive of that. Because I think, I mean, I think if you're going to spend money anywhere, it's a good idea to spend money when it comes to kids' safety. The seatbelt initiative comes from a statewide plan to install seatbelts for all Texas school buses by 2010. But not everyone believes the new seatbelts will make bus travel more safe. Something happened to the bus that it malfunctioned um, and, they, and everyone had to get off the bus. How quickly would they be able to get out of the seatbelt off the bus? School buses have a low ratio of accidents considering how many are on the road every day. TSA reports only about five school bus related deaths per year. Whether or not these Dallas students will be more safe while riding in their new seat belted buses is still up for debate. But for now, these kids are happy to be the first to try the seat belts out. Now, Dallas County Schools is the only service at this point that has seat belts in their buses. However, there are 65,000 students who ride each day, so they've obviously got a lot more work to do. Reporting live in Dallas, I'm Shannon Miller, CBS 11 News. It may have been more fun than games this weekend at the annual Red River Shootout, the OU Texas game, or as some people refer to it. Texas OU, there is no doubt. Whatever the name of the game, there were plenty of nachos, not to mention grease, to go around before kickoff. The atmosphere even sparked a divided couple's rivalry. Are you guys sitting on the Texas side or the OU side? OU side, obviously. A little nervous about sitting over there? Uh, a little bit. And even louder than the Boomer Sooner chant was a voice coming from above the State Fair, the voice of Big Tex. Howdy, folks.
I even got a chance to see where his voice really comes from. How do you decide what to say at what point of the day? Well, the State Fair of Texas has some one-liners that uh, they have suggested that I say. And so uh, I follow the script uh, and then I Texize it. But the Cotton Bowl excitement outside the stadium was just the beginning. The inside of the bowl and its sidelines resembled a mini red carpet. From American idols to sports gurus, the star sideline was studded with more than just players. But the shiniest star of all stayed in one place, the coveted BCS trophy. It even had its own bodyguard. It's a uh, water for crystal trophy worth $30,000. It takes three months yeah, to make. They hand make it. And uh, we tour it all around the country, take it to a different game every week. Although Sooner fans would like to forget the way the game turned out this year, surely they'll always be coming back for more, even if it is just for the sights and sounds. Shannon Miller, Sooner Vision. And I'm Shannon Miller. Last night's late season freeze might have had an impact on vegetation and a potential 625 new state jobs could be created under that program. A lot of international talk this week about nuclear firearms. The squirrels stationed on Wisconsin's capital are going on a diet. We'll bring an umbrella with our basket along yes, with us. Yes, definitely. <laughs> All right, thanks, Vivek. And thank you for watching OU Nightly.